Our next example, x minus 5y greater than or equal to 20. So remember, in order to solve this inequality, the first step is to circle the sign, the number, and the y. Then we're going to put a box around the side that has the y value. Our goal is to get rid of everything inside the box except Y, except our letter Y. So we are going to leave this for last. So first we have to start out getting rid of the X. In front of this X, there's an imaginary, if you see nothing, it means that there's an imaginary plus sign. We're going to do the opposite. If you see a plus sign, then you're going to put a minus sign. So minus X goes here, and minus X goes also over here on the other side of the wall. We're going to bring down everything that we circled. A positive X means that there's a positive 1 in front of the X. A negative X means that there's a negative 1 in front of the X. A positive 1X means that I have $1 in my pocket. A negative 1X means that I have to give you a dollar. If I have a dollar in my pocket, I have to give you a dollar. That means I have nothing. So we put nothing here. The positive 1 and the negative 1 cancel each other out. I'm going to bring down everything I see inside the circle, the negative, the 5, and the Y my inequality symbol. And these two are not like terms. So all you do is write them side by side. Normally I would put the 20 first, but you know that the X value has to go first. So I'm going to put my negative and my x first, and this is a positive 20. So I'm going to put a positive 20. We still have to, <clears throat> excuse me, get rid of everything except the y. Next to the y is a negative 5. In between the y and negative 5, there's an imaginary multiplication symbol. The opposite of multiply is to divide. So I'm going to divide everything that I see by negative 5. Now here's the tricky part. With an inequality, <coughs> whenever I divide or <coughs> multiply by a negative number, then I have to Flip the sign in the middle. So anytime you divide by a negative number or you cross multiply or multiply by a negative number when you have an inequality, this inequality has to flip in the other direction. That is the rule that you have to remember. So now I'm going to rewrite this with my new inequality. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm going to write negative 5y divided by negative 5. I'm going to flip my inequality in the other direction. I had a negative x here. 
I had a negative 5. In front of this negative x, there's an imaginary 1. If you see nothing, put a 1 there. Plus 20 over negative 5. A negative 5 divided by a negative 5 is a 1. So I'm left with y. I've already flipped my inequality. Now I'm going to draw my peace signs. Because fraction line means division. So really, this is a division line. Really, this is a division line. All they're missing are the two dots. So anytime you multiply or divide, that is when you draw your peace sign. When you add or subtract, you do I owe you and I have to give you. So I'm going to shade in a negative because I see a negative here. And I'm going to shade in this negative because I see that negative in front of that number. A negative divided by negative means that this is going to be a positive answer. So here I'm going to write y with a positive answer. A positive 1 over 5x. Here, let me draw my signs, plus, minus, minus. There is nothing in front of the 20. Well, there's a plus sign in front of the 20. So I'm going to shade in the plus sign. There's a negative sign in front of the 5, so I'm going to shade in the negative sign, which means that this answer is going to be negative. <coughs> Excuse me. Negative 20 over 5. Remember with fractions, you now have to reduce this fraction. In order to reduce this fraction, um, I have to use the GCF, the greatest common factor. So I'm going to write out the times tables for 20 and 5 and find the number in their times tables that's the biggest. So I have 1 times 20, 2 times 10, 3 times 6 is 18, 4 times 4 is 16. So I got to try all the numbers between 2 and 10. 3, 4, so 5. So I have a 5 times 4. There are no more numbers between 5 and 4, so I'm done. For 5, I have just only a 1 and a times 5. So do I see a number that's alike except 1? We don't care about 1 because all multiplication tables have number 1 in it. I see a 5 here, and I see a 5 here. So this is the GCF. We take that GCF number, and we divide it by the top and the bottom. So 20 divided by 5, 5 divided by 5. So our answer is y less than or equal to 1 over 5x minus 20 divided by 5. Uh, here... I see 5 times 4 equals 20. So I see the number 20, I see the number 5, so 20 divided by 5 must be 4. Here, 5 divided by 5, I see 1 times 5 is 5. So I see a 5 here, I see a 5 here. So 5 divided by 5 is 1. I don't have to put this 1 at the bottom of a fraction because it's just understood. So y is less than or equal to 1 over 5x. But if there's a, a number 1 at the top, you have to put that there. And that's a minus sign, I forgot. Minus 4. So this is our slope and y-intercept form. So remember, in order to graph this, I have to put a dot at negative 4, and then go up 1, and to the right 5, since this is a positive slope. So let's do that. So I'm going to go back here, make it a little bit smaller. I'm going to put my dot at negative 4 on the y-axis, negative 4, I go up 1, and to the right 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, put my dot. And then I, next thing I do is I determine if this line is dotted or solid. It's going to be solid because 
there is a equal to sign right up under the inequality. So I already have it as a solid line. My last step is to check and see, do I shade in this side of the line or do I shade in this side of the line? I'm going to try 0, 0 and see if this point makes the inequality true. If it does, I will shade here. If it doesn't, I will shade on this side. So let's go back to our inequality and let's try to substitute the x with 0 and the y with 0. So here for y, I'm going to put a 0. <coughs> Excuse me, I have 1, 5. For the x, I'm going to put a 0, minus 4. Anything times 0 is just 0. So actually, we have 0 less than or equal to negative 4, and we see if this inequality is true. The Pac-Man points to whatever is greater. This negative 4 means I have to give you $4. This 0 means that I don't have to give you anything. Would you rather have to give me $4 or would you rather have to give me nothing? You'd rather have to give me nothing. So this inequality should have been pointing towards a zero for it to be true. So actually this inequality is false. It's not true. So that means that I'm not going to shade in the side that contains zero, zero because it made it false. So I'll just shade in the other side. And I'm going to hit submit. And that's correct.